Pick your favorite horse. Ride it up, black ones, blue ones, green ones, yellow ones, all kinds. Get up and hold tight. You all set? Oh, you stand beautifully, Carol. Captain Burke, if you don't come over to our table and have your next drink with us, then I swear I'll just do something drastic. I swear I will. Well, I'd be delighted to, honey, just as soon as I say hello to the rest of my guests. Marvelous party, Amos. Thank you. I want you, Captain! Napakapandamay mo naman. Katarantado, katapatang pandamay mo naman. Excuse me. Hello. Amos, this is Les. I'm at a merry-go-round. Don't fall off the horse. Don't plan a social evening. Now you tell me. What's up? We found a body down here. What's the address? 34... Wait a minute. Yeah? 3412 Milford. 3412 Milford. A merry-go-round. A merry-go-round. I right, take a couple of rides. I'll be right there. Henry! Let's go. Looks like we're due at a merry-go-round. Merry-go-round? Now, boss? When duty calls, we horsemen have to ride. find any identification on him. It looks like a 38 hole in his back. Did you check? Well, we checked the body completely. He's wearing a very expensive suit, but the labels are removed. Then we didn't find any wallet or jewelry or other effects. Did you? Well, we took prints in there on the way to Washington. Were there any... No trespasses in the vicinity when we arrived. Just a man walking his dog, and we took his name. I suppose you got the dog's name, too. Yes, sir. Prince. Prince. Did you find anything on him? On the uh, dog. No, on the body. Well, we found this match folder here. Crystal Pier Ballroom. Dandy clue, huh? Got character, too. Crystal Pier Ballroom burned down 1930. 1930? Before our time. Oh, there's some numbers written in pencil on the inside flap. 54699. That isn't much better. They don't leave clues like they used to. No, they don't. What do you do for bloodstains? Bloodstains? Yeah. When a man is shot in the back, he usually bleeds. There are no bloodstains around the body. Could be he was shot elsewhere and brought here. Something tells me we should have noticed that. Well, that's all right, Les. Only captains are perfect. See you at the office. <laughs> There's no fingerprints of the dead man on record here or in Washington. 
Well, we're sprinting right along. Thanks, Henry. Coroner's findings. The man's been dead three days, probably shot last Tuesday night. This case gets happier all the time. Captain, what do you suggest we do? Well, we're not doing very well with this one. Maybe we'd better go out and find ourselves another body. So let me see that match folder again. Five, four, six, nine, nine. Five digits. Phone number? Well, I checked the numbers with the uh, phone company and there's a Crestview exchange with the same digits. What's the address? 1121 Marley Road. Who lives there? Stacy Evans, actress. Anything else? Picture from her agent. Want us to make a run, Amos? No, uh, you better stay in the foxhole. This one's for your old captain. <laughs> This may take a while. Read a book. Read a long book. Well, good evening. I'm uh, Captain Clerk Homicide. That hardly makes for a good evening. I'd like to ask a few questions. Give me a sample. Well, let's try. Uh, may I come in? You're certainly very polite for a man who knows he's going to come in anyway. Oh, I wouldn't do that. You mean you wouldn't break in? Mm. I'd uh, go down to the station, get a warrant, then I'd break in. Come in. What's on your mind, Captain? Oh, I was thinking I'd like to get some nice pajamas for my little niece. How old is your little niece? Twenty-five. Why don't you get her a teddy bear? She has a teddy bear. Isn't that sweet? Captain, may I ask you something? Sure. I'd like to ask you what it is you'd like to ask me. All right, miss. My friends call me Stacy. Police yes. captains call me Miss Evans. Miss Evans, where were you three nights ago? Tuesday this week? Most people, when they're being interrogated by the police, get nervous, don't they? Sometimes. They usually ask for a drink of water? Some. Not me. I'm going to have a martini. Will you join me? Never drink martinis with beautiful suspect, Burke's Law. Good thinking. What am I suspected of, Captain? Where were you Tuesday night? Home. I'm home every night. That's right. Does that clear me of something? Did you receive any visitors or have any phone calls? Nope. That's a quick answer. I'd remember. I don't have many friends here. Well, you seem like a girl who'd have a lot of friends. Thanks. But I don't think Mr. Flood would appreciate that. Flood? Mm-hmm. Mr. Emery Flood, lumber. Chemicals, steel, oil, plastic. I know him, yes. You know the studio he owns? I've heard of it. I'm under exclusive contract to him. Well, that's very nice. What pictures have you been in? None. I was given this house and a check for $500 arrives every week in the mail. Well, that sounds like a very friendly arrangement. Mm -mm. It's not quite as friendly as you might think. See, I've been here for four years and I've never even met Mr. Flood. Well, I've got someone that I'd like you to meet. He's been carrying your phone number around with him. Oh, really? Mm. What do you want me to do? Identify a dead man. You want me to identify a body? They come in and they've got to be identified. That's where the body bounces. <laughs> I've never been to a morgue before. Does it always get everybody this way the first time? It gets everybody. Every time. Captain, may I see you for a minute? Excuse me. What is it, Tim? Did you recognize the body? No. That's kind of strange, isn't it? She doesn't know him, but uh, he has her phone number. Maybe somebody gave it to him. Do you have any idea who would know it? Emery fled for one. He'd be as good a place to start as any. Do you want me to bring him in, see if he can make identification? Blood's a hard man to find. 
Nobody's seen him for five years. He deals in the dark, man of mystery. What rock do we find, Mother? Captain, you want to find someone badly enough, you'll find him. Flattery will get you no place, Tim, except a promotion. <laughs> Jazz or classical? Stereo? We aim to please. Jazz. You treat all your prisoners this way? No, you're not my prisoner. You're my guest. Yeah, well, thanks. I've had a perfectly jolly evening. Maybe next time will be better. I think you better wait till I get over the first time. You know, I can't get over a captain in a chariot like this. What'd you do, rob a big bank? No, robbed a big daddy. My daddy. <laughs> Aren't you lonesome living in that large house all by yourself? No. I've got a dog and a television set. That's not too much. What are you trying for? Oh, maybe I'm just sorry for you. Maybe I'd like to cry on your shoulder. I'll leave the dog out. You can cry on his shoulder. Miss Evans, are you positive you didn't recognize the body? <sighs> you should get paid overtime. You stay suspicious around the clock. It comes with the territory. <laughs> I'll see you to the door. Uh, no, no, never mind. I can find it. Thank you for a perfectly marvelous evening. It's my pleasure. If you want me, you know where you can find me. I hope so. What? Don't leave town, Miss Evans. What? Flood's private office. His desk, his chair. However, he's never used his desk nor sat in his chair. You must be expecting him. Uh, oh, you mean because of this? <laughs> well, I do this every morning just in case Mr. Flood should drop by. When did he drop by last? Oh, 13 years ago. <laughs> How does he conduct his business? Bit, uh, oh, now you've done it. What have I done? If Mr. Flood should find fingerprints on this desk, I assure you the ship would sink. Uh, it... Yeah, that's better. Now, if you will step this way, Captain, I will show you the nerve center of Mr. Flood's empire. Certain instructions are tape recorded, others are teletyped. Mm -hmm. And in case of extreme emergency, the green phone will ring. What does that mean? It means that uh, Mr. Flood is on the line himself. He gives me direct instructions, and I act accordingly. I'm sure you must have some way of getting in touch with Mr. Flood. Uh, no, I'm afraid I, I haven't. No. Well, we feel that Mr. Flood can furnish us some information about a murder. Well, even if Mr. Flood could be located, I assure you it would serve no purpose. Uh, Mr. Flood doesn't approve of murder. <coughs> Beside Mr. Flood, who do you answer to? No one. Now, if you'll excuse me. You know, I just had a thought, Mr. Gregory. If I were to take you downtown and book you 72 hours for questioning, who would answer the phone? Do you mean that you would put me in a cell? Without the feather duster. All right. Mr. Flood does have a man a step higher than myself. His name is Henry Geller. Where does he live? Uh, ten for uh, Murdoch Lane. Go I'm sure you must be quite a comfort to Mr. Flood. Uh, rails up two point six. Utility down one point four. Edward. Uh, bear market. Bear market. Don't jump. Bad day. Edward, that was yesterday. Uh, can't win them all, huh, Dad? Uh, now, Edward, I want no persiflage. I... Bad day. Bad day. May I ask who you are? Your butler said I'd find you here, Mr. Geller. Do you customarily make calls during luncheon hours? People get murdered at unfortunate times. And who's been killed? 
Lizzie Borden took an axe, gave her mother 40 wax. Now, Edward, if you're going to talk nonsense, I'm going to have to ask you to stay out of the conversation. <laughs> you were saying someone had been murdered. You neglected to add who it was. Yes, so far we've neglected to find out who it was. And why did you come here? We're looking for someone. Who? Emery Flood. Mr. Flood doesn't concern himself with murders. I have an idea he'd be concerned with this one. Mr. Flood is a very difficult man to locate. I'm finding that out. Ah, he's a nasty one, sure is. Edward, courtesy, courtesy. Ah, I'm afraid Andy. Mr. Flood could be in any number of places. Name one. Let's say he's in Europe. Let's say we get a little more specific. Unfortunately, I'm unable to tell you. Then we'll leave it this way, Mr. Geller. If Mr. Flood should happen to get in touch with you, tell him something for me. I'm getting a material witness warrant out on him. I realize how shy he is about publicity. This should help him get over it. His name will be in every newspaper in the country. Won't do you any good. <laughs> I'll get it, Henry. I thought I told you to buy a new robe. I did? This is it. Well, go back and shoot the salesman. I'll get you off. Hello, hello, hello. How do you like your martinis? Dry? Earlier. You gonna let me stand out here all night? I don't know. I could get arrested. Policeman might pick me up and smell olives on my breath. You know, I've thought it all over very seriously, and I've come to a very serious conclusion. Tell me about your serious conclusion. I think we should make up. I didn't even know we were mad. I was mad. Matter of fact, I think I'm still mad. I think I'll go. No, wait a minute. Yeah, of course, you're right. Here, why don't you drink your martini? I need my glasses back. Can't see a thing without them. In a minute. Why don't you come into the study? Me in a man's study at this hour of the morning? Well. I'd love it. You know something? You're full of an awful lot of nasty habits going around suspecting people of murder, inviting ladies into your study at goodness knows what o'clock, and then fuzzing up everything with liquor? Oh, I didn't mean to give that impression. No, of course you didn't. You'd like to hide it. I want to find out exactly where we stand. Are you going to continue to suspect me and spy on me, or are you going to let me go about my business? You're free to do anything you please. Leave town? Go to Palm Springs, maybe? If you'd like. Well, I'd like that just fine. Let's go. Oops. Just look like a relative. <laughs> What are you doing here this hour of the morning? He told me to follow her. Bless you, a man of duty and dedication. I like that. Go home. No, wait a minute. I got to go back to headquarters. I think you better come along. What's the matter? Well, we ran into a little difficulty in there. Flooded with it. Oh. I'll change my coat. We'll be right with you, Mr. Hart. Uh -huh. You're not coming down to the station with us. Ah. I can't come watch you work? Makes me feel all bubbly inside. Some other time. You wouldn't want me to tell Mr. Hart, would you? Tell him what? How you called me here, how you... He wouldn't believe a word of it. Mr. Hart! Les, uh, Miss Evans is coming down to the station with us. This is as far as you go. Well, but, but you said that... There may be evidence in there that may make you the sixth woman to ever go to the gas chamber. Captain, he's a Mr. Flood's attorneys. Gentlemen. 
Captain, we understand you have a material witness warrant for Mr. Flood. If so, proper steps will be taken to produce Mr. Flood. If not, legal action will be instituted for withdrawal of the warrant. We demand to know the basis on which this warrant was issued. In short, Captain, where is the body? The body is in the morgue, but we request to see it. As a matter of fact... We demand to see it. All right. Let's let him see the body. Follow me, gentlemen. Remind me never to buy a Hamburg. That warrant of yours for flood sure brought rain. That's very funny. See, I did some checking. And that Miss Evans isn't the only actress on the contract that Mr. Flood is, uh, Allison Graham. And probably others. Looks like he specializes in collecting girls and, uh, lawyers. Captain? Yeah? Under the circumstances, uh, we'll drop our case. Aren't you going to tell me about it? Tell you about what? Oh, what happened at the station? You haven't said a word since we left. Stacy, why don't you move in a little closer? Get yourself a little apartment. I don't like apartments. You know something nice above the smog? I can see the smog very nicely from where I am. I don't think you'll be living there very long. Why not? Mr. Flood's senior attorney just identified the body. Well, good old for you. But not for you. It was Emery Flood. unable to locate logical suspect. I'd say that was reasonably accurate. Captain, I don't want to push, but it seems almost certain that Stacy Evans is connected in some way. Or why would Mr. Flood have her telephone number? What are you going to do about the motive? She'd be killing the goose that laid the golden eggs. Maybe there weren't going to be any more golden eggs. Your idea has color. Of course, there's still Gregory and Geller. Mm -hmm. Both of the same motive, and both very high in the organization with an opportunity to dip into the till. Cherchez les buck. Detective Hart, Captain. Yeah. Yes, Les. Who? All right, I'll meet him. Yeah, goodbye. The car, Henry. Let's go, Tim. Where are we going? I think a little bird has come home to roost. Thank you. I happen to be at the bird shop, so I thought you wouldn't mind meeting me here. This is Detective Tilson, Mr. Geller. How do you do, sir? What's on your mind, Geller? There's never been a scandal in the flood enterprises. The killer must be caught immediately, and this matter put to rest as quickly and quietly as possible. I'll try to do that for you. What's that? I bought some lovebirds. Lovebirds? Well, they're really not too well acquainted, but love will come. I hope so. I don't want one of them to get killed. Captain, I demand that you produce a suspect at once. I think we can arrange that. Then you do have someone. Possibly. Who? You. Me? You're the one person who benefits most by his death. No, that's not true. You see, there's someone over me in the organization. Who may that be? Harold Mason. Where does he live? He's staying at his beach house now, 412 Malibu Circle. Oh, the little monsters. I'll have to do something. Please let me out at the next corner. Henry, I'll talk to Mason and get back to you later. Uh, but what I meant, sir, is Mr. Mason's out of town. He really isn't here, sweetie. The name's Burke. Captain Burke. Homicide. Well, take a look for yourself, Captain, sweetie. 
You know, lover, I've never seen a real live detective before. Well, what have you got here? A real live detective? Mm. Smorgasbord. Are you Mrs. Mason? <laughs> Sweetie, I wouldn't be Mrs. Mason if he owned the jars. I want to report something missing. What? A drink. Want to help me look for one? Right now, we need Mr. Mason. Good. We'll look for him. He isn't here. He isn't here. Well, what do we have here? Uh, Miss... Graham. Allison Grant? Darling, you remember me. Do you remember me, too? All I remember is we wanted to talk to Mr. Mason. Why? Oh, we thought he might be able to give us some information about a murder. Whose? Emery Floods. Emery, Emery had a big fall. Did you know Mr. Flood? Precious, we were inseparable. How inseparable. We saw each other regularly, once every year. May I ask what you're doing here in Mr. Mason's house? The king is dead. Long live the crown prince. Thank you, Miss Graham. Maybe we'll see you sometime. Uh, you want to know when? When you catch who it was that murdered Emery. I want to get their names spelled right so I can build them a monument. How do you do? Captain Burke and Detective Tilson to see Mr. Gregory. Just a moment, please. They want me to go in there, and I'm sure that they are not delivering my messages to Mr. Flood. I've been waiting here to see him most of the morning. Have you? Yes, as, as a matter of fact, I, I wait here every morning. Oh, would you care for a lady finger? Uh, no, thank you. If, if you do see Mr. Flood, you can do me a very special favor. What's that? Give him this note. I... Oh, please. Please. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, Mr. Gregory will see you. Thank you. Mr. Gregory. Captain. This is Detective Tilson. How do you do? Happy to see you both. Now, what can I do for you? We need some more information. Oh, uh, 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 oh uh, Tim. Jim, you've just sunk the ship. Fingerprints. I have tried to tell you everything I could. Perhaps you haven't tried hard enough. And what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that you probably know the names of other girls Mr. Flood had under contract. That's a part of Mr. Flood's business that I did not handle. Mr. Gregory, we're prepared to go into this at length. I... There is a Miss Barry Coleman, 423 Pine Street. What about that lady waiting in the outer office? Oh, you mean Annabelle? Mm -hmm. An old flame, one of the very first. She went with Mr. Flood more than 30 years ago. He hasn't seen her since. Why does she wait out there? She's lost in her memories. She comes here almost every day. Mr. Flood gave instructions to treat her kindly. It doesn't seem very kind to let her wait out there for a dead man. Well, there's no way of telling her that Mr. Flood is dead, so she'll wait. She'll probably wait as long as she lives. You keep cleaning as though Mr. Flood was still alive. Uh, Captain, uh, Mr. Flood was a determined man. He might come back. <laughs> Very kind of you, gentlemen, to drive me home. It's our pleasure. Are you... are you quite sure that 
Mr. Flood is out all day. Well, we inquired and... He was probably called away on urgent business. Oh, Emery's involved in so many things. He's, he's a very important man, you know. Allow me. Oh, thank you. Oh, here we are already. Turn here, Henry. Oh, well, won't you gentlemen come in? Thank you, but I'm afraid we can't. Oh, but I... I don't have many visitors. I'm sorry. We have to get back. Oh, well, thank you again. Mason arrived flight 42 Transamerican an hour ago. I'll go over and welcome him home. And you might like the rest of it. He was in Texas when it's known that he sold off blocks of flood stock. I like the rest of it. Thanks, Les. Mason's back. We going over? No, I'd like you to check out this girl, Barry Coleman. I'll talk to Mason. Sir, this is a side of you I've never seen before. Hmm? You're taking the man and giving me the girl? Tim, your old captain's feeling benevolent. Cherish the moment. Barry Coleman? Yes? Detective Tilson. Back him in. Why not? We can talk in here. Make yourself comfortable, Detective. Miss Coleman, you knew Mr. Emery Flood, didn't you? Knew him? No, I don't think so. That's a strange answer. Well, we didn't have much of an acquaintance. Well, according to the information that I have, you were under contract to him as an actress. His apartment... Uh... Belonged to him. Everything belonged to Mr. Flood. He had a corner on the world. Miss Coleman... I go to his funeral, but, um... I have to do my nails. You sound as if you hated him. Nobody hated Mr. Flood, Detective. That was a luxury that wasn't permitted. But you're glad he's dead. No. No, I'll miss him and all the wonderful things he did for me. Oh, you have no idea all the things he did for me. I'd like to know. Well, there are other girls, you know. I happen to know this one. He bought her a whole room full of Dresden china. But do you know what happened? One night he telephoned and she wasn't here. So I inherited all this. <laughs> What was the purpose of that? Because I don't deserve these beautiful things either. Miss Coleman, were you here last Tuesday night? I was here every night this week. But I went out during the day. I got sick and tired of sitting around this apartment waiting for him to call. What did you do? Well, after a while you get lonesome for people. So I... I went for a walk on the boulevard, and men would look at me, and then I wasn't lonesome anymore. You know, a few months ago, a man talked to me, and, and I invited him up here. And then there was another man, and another. We used to sit here on this sofa and have drinks, 
right in front of his picture. I like to think that he was watching. Detective Tilson, don't you want to kiss me too? Miss Coleman, I think I've got everything I need here. So have I. Yes, so have I. So have I. That's why I'll always be grateful to Mr. Black. <laughs> I just can't look at myself anymore. It'll be all right. <laughs> Don't touch me. Don't! <laughs> 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 Young man, I, I really don't know what to say. You won't find your answer in a fish tank. Little fella seems to have lost his appetite. Why'd you do that? I'm simply proving that the meek do not inherit the earth or any other facilities. But a piranha. Most people happen to be for the underdog. I happen to be for the upper dog. Would you uh, uh, care for some of this fudge? Mr. Mason, did you spend the past few days in Texas? Yes, yes, I did. Is it true that you sold off a whole block of Flood Enterprises stock? Young man, I'm getting the odious impression that you're trying to involve me in Mr. Flood's death. Mr. Mason, there's only one reason that you'd sell off Flood stock. And what might that be? The fact that you knew Mr. Flood was already dead. Corporal. Captain. Yes, yes, Captain. I read somewhere that uh, one might obtain clemency by, uh, I think the expression is, copping a plea. Sometimes. Are you prepared to sign a contractual agreement to, to that effect? One of these jellies, or? Hmm? No, thank you. I'm prepared to listen to what you have to say about your part in Mr. Flood's death. Well, then let's get on with it. Yeah, you see, last Tuesday night, at approximately 11.30, I received a call from uh, Mr. Flood saying that he was uh, seriously wounded. And he wanted me to come to this uh, particular location immediately. What location? Oh, some apartment down near the beach somewhere. And uh, when I arrived, I found that Mr. Flood was dead. Apparently been shot in the back. I realize it would be total disaster to the Flood Empire if the news of Mr. Flood's death got out. I needed time to sell off stock in various enterprises and gain control in others. You understand? This English toffee is delicious. Mm. So you took him to the merry-go-round, which was closed for the time, and removed all of his identification? Yes, but I want to make it explicitly clear that I did not kill Mr. Flood. I merely transported the body. <laughs> we'll talk about that downtown. Well, we should take time to let the uh, divinity cool. It's my own private recipe. It's... Oh, this feels good. Five hours with Mason and Gelly, you really have to stay in shape. They're sure sticking with the story. Yeah, I don't have enough NG to go over it again with them. It's beginning to look like that match cover with the phone number. Stacy? All we have is her word that Mr. Flood didn't call, but everything indicates that he did. Maybe intended to, I never got around to it. Captain, he was in a hurry to call. Never even took time to write down a prefix. That'll be there. No, I don't think she did it. I think it'd be a waste of time to talk to her again. Where are you going? To talk to her again. and I'm loaded. Oh, how marvelous. I was afraid maybe you'd forgotten my address. Oh, I wrote it down in an old match cover. Oh, you've got that same sound in your voice and the same look on your face. What sound? What look? Like how she's gonna look in the gas chamber. 
Stacy, I've got a problem. Ah, oh, what? You. Oh? Huh? Yeah, look, you told me that you were home Tuesday night. That flood didn't visit you and he didn't telephone you. That's right. Now, if you're involved in this, you better tell me. You know, there are various kinds of murder. Unpremeditated, justifiable homicide. Maybe I can help you. What are you going to do, get me a low number? Stacy. Here, take your drink back. You probably put something in it. Stacy. All right, all right, I killed him. He kept sending me those $500 checks every week and not taking out Social Security. No, Scott. Captain. What is it, Tim? I thought maybe you needed a match. Hmm? Oh, Cafe Montmartre. What's that about? Popular Hollywood cafe. But it went out of business in 1929. I'd like to see the rest of your collection. The matches we found on Flood's body were from the same period. You know, I don't need a light, but I'm beginning to see one. Let's go. Hey, wait a minute. What am I supposed to do with two martinis? Find two olives. Be back. Friends, Clara Bow, Monty Blue, Mabel Norman, Richard Bothamus, Francis X. Bushman. Names from long ago. Everything's from long ago. You know, I got the strangest feeling that nothing in this house has been changed since 1929. Except, except what, Captain? He'd hardly fit that era. Robert Mitchum. There's no personal inscription. A bullet hole. It's about a 38 slug. Yeah. Forgive my tardiness, gentlemen. I would have come down sooner, but I'm expecting Mr. Flood. We'd like to talk to you, Miss Rogers. Well, won't you sit down? And what can I do for you, gentlemen? We mustn't take too long, though, because Mr. Flood will be here at any time now. Miss Rogers, where did you plan to go with Mr. Flood? To the Café Montmartre? Oh, no, we usually have lunch in there. Why do you ask? Well, in the car yesterday when we drove you home, I accidentally slipped a book of your matches in my pocket, and I noticed that they were from the Café Montmartre. Well... After all, one really doesn't meet the right people there in the evenings. Where do you like to go? Crystal Pier Ballroom? We think it's very nice there. And I think Abe Lyman's orchestra is very nice. And, you know, a great number of motion picture personalities go dancing there. Like Clara Kimball Young, Greta Nilsson, Lou Cody? Yes. They're all such wonderful darlings. Oh. Forgot to like the incense. Does uh, Robert Mitchum go to the Crystal Pier Ballroom? Who? The gentleman whose photograph covers the bullet hole on the wall. Oh, you mustn't take that down. Really, you mustn't. No, no, put, put that right back, please. How did the bullet hole get there, Miss Rogers? I can't discuss that with you. I must ask you to leave. You really can't stay. Emery will be here at any moment. Who are you trying to protect, Miss Rogers? Protect? No one. Miss Rogers, Mr. Flood has a number of other girls. Would you cover up for them? I am the only woman in Mr. Flood's life. The only woman he really loves. How did it happen? Who are you trying to help? I've asked you to go. Please respect my wishes. I'm afraid we can't. No one must know about this. There must be no publicity. It would destroy him. I'm sorry, but we must know how it happened. I can't do anything that might hurt Emery. He won't be hurt. Can I trust you? We'll do everything we can to help you.
Well, it, it was a few nights ago when our, all the servants were away. And I heard a key turn in the lock. And a man walked in, an old man. He walked right up to me and tried to kiss me. Well, you can imagine my revulsion. An old man like that, trying to kiss me. What did you do? I broke away and I ran upstairs. And I got my gun from the bureau drawer. The gun that Emery had given me to protect myself with. I came back downstairs and I saw him making himself perfectly at home and using my telephone. I was terrified, so I, I shot him. He turned and looked at me in amazement. He, he looked at me as though he knew me. Then he staggered out the front door. I heard a car pulling away and he was gone. Horrible old man with those wretched thoughts. Well, he was gone. I'm going to have to ask you to come with us. Where? Where no one will hurt you. Will we be gone long? I'm afraid so. Then I'd better turn on the Victrola again, family. No. I'll do it for you. You'll need a coat. She loved him so much. Why didn't she recognize him? Because she only knew the Emery Flood who looked like this. When he came to visit her Tuesday night, he was just an old man, a stranger. Well, why did he come back here? Maybe to recapture an old memory. He certainly cared for her. Well, what do you mean? Well, even after she shot him, he ran away, did everything he could not to implicate her. It's a strange case. One of the most powerful men in the world killed, and no one really seemed to care. Captain? Yeah? What will they do to her? I only pray they don't do one thing. What's that? Let her read the newspaper. Why? I'd hate for her to find out who killed Emery Flood. I expected you earlier. All right. Where would you like to go? Palm Springs. Palm Springs? It's 104 degrees there. So what? <laughs> now what can you do at 104 degrees? And you call yourself a detective? <laughs> 